Recently, I explained to somebody that sometimes I like taking the hard road. When I'm climbing mountains, I often purposely choose a more difficult route, maybe harder navigationally, more difficult terrain, or maybe it's just something simple like the weather. I'm not only a sunny day hiker, I'll go up that mountain in bad weather too. And they replied by asking me, if the fact that some people choose to take the easy route, if that makes me enjoy the hard route less, the fact that when I get to the top of the mountain, there'll be other people up there who took the easy path or the pony track or even the lift up to the top, does their victory take something away from mine? Well, I think you shouldn't look at somebody else's path before you decide whether you enjoyed your own. And that conversation inspired me to make today's video, which is unofficially titled, There are two ways to climb a mountain. You see, this week I climbed Snowdon, and I think for mountains in the UK, this one has the most significant difference between the easy route and the hard route. You can climb Snowdon via a route such as the Miner's Track, which is a well-maintained, wide and flat route, and in good weather, it's a pretty gentle hike and very picturesque. Or you can take a route like the Crib Gok route, which is a knife edge ridge, and you could do that in gale force wind, rain or snow. For today's hike, I took the Kribgok route up and the miner's track down, and hopefully this video will show you that Snowden has a lot to offer a wide range of hikers, and hopefully I'll leave you thinking that even if you're not up to the ridge route, you can still have a great hike and a great day. Take your own path, and whether you're coming up the ridge with me, or you're taking the Watkins path, or the miner's track, you do you. To get here, I parked a little distance away from the base of Snowden, about one kilometre out at a parking spot on the A498. There is a good car park at the base, but it requires you to book in advance during the busy periods and it can fill up quickly. Also, it's £25 for a full day parking pass, so I stopped just one kilometre away on the A498 and paid £4 for the full day. When I arrived at 7.30, that parking spot was filling up pretty quickly, and you'll see at the end of the video that it was very busy, so I would recommend arriving early. From the Penny Pass side of the mountain, which is the side that I'm approaching from, you have three route choices. The Miner's Track, the Pig Track, and the Crib Gok Ridge. Leaving the car park, if you turn left, you'll go down the Miner's Track, and if you turn right, then you'll follow along the Pig Track, and either you can keep on the Pig Track, or you can turn right a little further down and head up towards the base of the ridge. If you're planning on taking the ridge, but perhaps didn't get the weather that you were hoping for, you could always turn left at that fork and stick to the pig track all the way instead, if that's needed. The ridge route does gradually get more and more challenging, so you're unlikely to suddenly find yourself in over your head as it moves from path to track to step to simple scrambles to start, and then it gets more and more difficult scrambles from there. I did find a couple of spots where it wasn't immediately obvious which route to take on the scramble, and I found myself checking the map a few more times than usual to ensure that I was making progress in the right direction. This could have been because towards the top the weather was very poor during this climb, but there was a few places where I definitely didn't feel that the correct route was obvious. So it is important to keep aware and keep looking around to see if there is maybe a better route than the one you're taking during the scrambles. There was very few people on the ridge today, um, but I did call over a couple of times to other hikers to ask what does it look like over there, and to exchange opinions on routes up the scramble. I think during the scramble up the ridge and over Crib Gok itself, I passed maybe six people, so it was very quiet on the ridge today, especially for such a popular mountain. For the benefit of your eardrums, I have significantly reduced the audio, even more than I usually do on the clips running in the background, because there were definitely gale force winds today. I don't want to overstate that, but at one point the, the wind did push me over, so on a ridge like Crib Gok, it was pretty dangerous. So of course a route like this, in weather like this, shouldn't be attempted unless you're very confident in these conditions, that you're dressed appropriately, you have good boots on. But as the video shows, it can be done. And really the big thing here in my opinion is just staying low to the ground, moving very carefully, making sure you've got a good handhold on for when those gusts come. You can see as well that visibility was pretty terrible. But navigating the route itself was actually reasonably easy. I mentioned that finding the right path up the scramble can be quite difficult, but once you're on the summit of Crib Gok and you're making your way along, navigation was pretty easy. You can see in these clips here, 
either I'm just following the ridge or I'm just following the track. So didn't have much difficulty with navigation, even in such poor visibility. I also mentioned that on the ridge I only passed about six people. Well, now we're coming to the end of the ridge and we're walking towards the summit of Snowden itself. And there was an awful lot of people. Even though the weather was so terrible, even though visibility was so bad, scale force winds, there's rain, there's still a huge number of people at the summit of Snowden. And as you can see, not everybody was dressed appropriately. There's a lot of people who appear to be completely soaking wet at this point. Um, yeah, d dress appropriately if you're going out hiking. And if you are going just for the Kribgok route, I wouldn't blame you if you get to that first trek point that marks the end of the ridge route and then you claim a win and you head back down because the summit of Snowden itself was incredibly busy. And there was a queue for people to get up to the trick point itself and take a photograph at the top, which I completely understand. But that's it, we're done. You've seen the photograph of my hand on the trick point. Right. We have climbed the Crib Gok route and loved every second of it, so we are taking the miners track down. So we just retrace our steps very slightly to get onto the pig track, follow that to the miners track, and then as we're lowering our altitude, the weather improves greatly. Of course, we're lowering out of the cloud layer, and the miners track was pretty sheltered, so we didn't have to deal with the wind either. The miners track is a great route. It's accessible to a lot of people, and like I say, if you're not feeling the ridge, you can always take the miners track. And the eagle-eyed amongst you may have noticed in this video, I'm actually wearing different boots to usual. I've swapped out my Altbergs for something different, a proper pair of mountaineering boots as opposed to the tabbing boots that I usually wear. And I will be doing a review of these soon, but since we're down on the miners track, I don't need my mountaineering boots. So I've swapped into just a pair of trainers for the walk back, which was gentle, scenic and calm. At this point, maybe you want to grab a coffee at the Penny Pass Cafe, but for me, I'm just here for the summit, and that's another one ticked off. <laughs>